Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring, and 10 Paints or Less, my series in which I attempt to paint things using 10 Paints or Less. Funnily enough, today I'm going to be looking at painting Alien Stalkers from the Alien vs Predator The Hunt Begins base game. Um, partly because this game is shortly going out of production, so I thought I'd better get the get this video done while people were still interested and it was still relevant. Um, so this is a very quick and easy method, and we're going to try and make the alien look like um, the alien from Alien 3 because that's um, where the alien stalkers come from. So we are starting with uniform grey over a black base coat. So we've got Abaddon Black all over the miniature and then we're going to dry brush uniform grey. And we don't want to do a, a really heavy dry brush but we want to pick out all of the raised details over all of the models. So that's, that's um, on top and underneath the model. Just very lightly dry brushing to, to bring out all of the different um, protrusions and claws and everything else. And this will look quite ghastly at the moment, um, but don't worry about it because it should all come out in the mix. As you can see, yeah, looks a bit gnarly at the moment, um, but we're going to get a slightly mottled effect going on on the dome, which is good. Um, next, we're going to use ash grey, which is a lighter grey, and we're going to do an even lighter dry brush just over the top of the miniature. Um, this is going to add to the mottled effect on the dome, on, on the head, and also just um, get a slightly different different tone, on the, a, a, a lighter tone on the raised areas. Again, don't be too, too heavy with the dry brush because you don't want it to, to brighten up the model too much. Now we're going to chestnut ink. This is an, an old bottle of chestnut ink that I've had for a million years. Um, you can't buy it anymore, but um, this works perfectly for what I wanted because, like I say, I'm trying to get it to look like the alien from Alien 3. Obviously, a the movie Alien 3 has a, a very um, uh, burnt umber type color scheme. It has it's that, that sort of those dark orangey browns and reds. Um, so that's what I'm trying to recreate in this uh, particular color scheme. Um, I'm applying the chestnut ink over the whole model. Ink doesn't flow the same way that a wash does, um, so you have to make sure you get a good covering, um, and you have to make sure that the entire model is covered because if you miss a point, um, you will notice it. I'm not diluting the ink down at all. I am literally just, just sloshing it on, um, so it will be a very dark, heavy pigment over the entire model. Um, I, I guess you just have to try and find a, a close approximation to the chestnut ink. Um, but that is what you end up with. Um, as you can see, you can get, you're seeing, seeing a sort of mottled effect on the dome where, where the ink is interacting with those different dry brush stages that we did. So that's pretty much the alien done, apart from we're going to use some shining silver to pick out the teeth. You can pick out the claws and things if you want to as well, but I'm not bothering, I'm relying on the uh, the dry brushes and the ink wash to to do that for me. I just want to um, draw attention to the head area a little bit by adding just a, a spot colour of silver on the teeth. Not a lot, just a tiny little bit, trying to pick out the individual teeth. We're now going to lead belcher because the alien is pretty much done. So we're going to put lead belcher all over the entire base, uh, the scenic base of the miniature. Now, I'm using uh, lead belcher straight from the pot because I'm only doing one coat. I'm not, I don't care too much about having a even coverage over the entire base um, because of because it's going to get washed out in, in a moment anyway, and it's just a scenic base. But if you want to, you can thin your paint down and put on two coats. Actually, I didn't feel the need to bother. It looks very bright and silvery at the moment, so obviously our good friend Nuln Oil is going to be used to knock that down. Um, and you're going to slosh lots of Nuln Oil on. You want to fill all of the recesses all over the model. That's what we end up with. We're going back to lead belcher, and this is just to do a very, very minimal highlight using a fine, fine uh, dry brush, just to pick out some of the raised details on the, on the scenic base again. 
And there we have it. I have now hit the model with a, a spray coat of varnish to protect it. And that has um, dulled it all. So we're going to now go to uh, Null Oil Gloss. And we're going to put a small amount of Null Oil Gloss in the mouth over the teeth. So we will get a sort of gloopy look in the mouth. So it's just going into the into the... We're actually going to go over the teeth and into the negative space around the teeth. So the teeth will be dulled down ever so slightly so they're not quite so shining silver as they were. And and then the gloss will make it look gloopy. And then I'm also going to put a coating of the gloss null oil over the dome. Just to add that little bit of, of glimmer and shimmer to the, to the head. Because the uh, the varnish did take out all of the, all of the, the gloss on the model. And there we go, that is finished. You can see that the, the dome is shiny and it has like this weird mottled browny red effect going on, which is the combination of the chestnut ink over the two different types of uh, gray dry brush. And you can see the mouth, shiny mouth. And that's not a bad approximation, I think, um, of, of the movie look for the alien in Alien 3. Um, this is just a, a different a different model from the set of five that you get in the base game. You can see that I've used some red just to, just to pick out the details of that piece of piping on the ground. But uh, in all other regards, painted it in exactly the same way. It's very quick. It's very effective. Gets them to the table looking decent, you know, with, without a huge amount of effort. And that's what I was going for here. I'm sure there are much better ways to uh, to achieve the same effect. Um, the only problem I sort of foresee with this is finding Chestnut Ink. Um, there must be other companies that do something similar. Um, you might be able... Uh, I did practice um, mixing Agrax Earthshade with a very small amount of um, oranges and reds and browns um, to create a sort of a wash with with that, that kind of brownish red pigment. And you can do it that way. But if you can find some Chestnut Ink somewhere, um, I think that's, that's the best way to go to create this particular look. And, and I guess that's everything I've got to say. Um, I hope people have found this, this interesting. Um, comments or queries, as always, leave them below and I will do my best to get back to everybody. And I will see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.